So kicking off part 40 of the XC restoration, we're revisiting the XW again. Here it is photographed at the North Ringwood shops with a disabled uh, sticker on the windscreen in a disabled car park. And that's exactly the look I was <laughs> looking for when I built the thing. Oh, this is the sun visor, which I was going to put on, but then later decided against it. Um, took mother out shopping and uh, got a coffee while we were there and had a lovely morning indeed. Uh, of course, these are two pictures of gentlemen building 351 Cleveland engines and of course this next shot coming up now is a gentleman uh, showing the difference between open and closed chamber and of course we have a large train full of brand new XC Falcons ready for delivery to the dealerships or their appropriate dealerships and of course this lovely piece of artwork that a gentleman did for me for printing on mugs and this sort of stuff I'd really like to know who you are because I have forgotten I'm terribly terribly sorry so if you can get in touch with me then at least I'll know who to thank and we can get something about it, do something about getting them printed. Anyway, on with part 40. So behind my garage washing machine is a brake helper. Look at those lights so you can see it. Covered in cobwebs and dirt and muck and all that sort of stuff. That's the one I didn't disassemble last year because I wanted to refer to it uh, when I put the handbrake spring and everything back on. I just wanted to keep it there in one piece so that I could um, keep it fresh in my memory because I was not really ready to rebuild them when I pulled the other one apart. I guess the first thing we're going to do is, in talking about this, I've got to reacquaint myself with all this stuff because um, I've forgotten. I pulled them apart 18 months ago or whatever and chucked bits in a box, plated bits, yada yada yada, you know how it goes. Oh, actually, before I forget, look at these. I've ordered a whole stack of parts, some other parts. I've got these today. And these are, let's say one out here. The other one's the same. I got offered some courtesy, real courtesy lamps, and I tried to paint one, and it looked rubbish and all that sort of stuff. Um, these were, I think, 40 bucks the pair, the rear courtesy lights, and they are in gorgeous condition. You just never see them like that. With some of these old cars being sort of left out in the rain and the sunshine, these deteriorate really, really rapidly, and of course, they just go a matte silver, and they're mottled and look terrible. So I'm well pleased with those. They're lovely. There's a new old stock pair available. There's a tiny bit of um, which rub through there. There's a new old stock pair. I think with two hundred dollars. They, as far as I'm concerned, are as good as a new old stock pair. People are trying to pedal stuff as new old stock, which is clearly used, um, which I think is horrible. Oh, my wife's in. Hello, Suze. God's snake is happening. Is it? Yeah. Okay, it's Mother's Day on Sunday, and my daughter bought my wife that many presents. It's ridiculous. God snack is in the backyard. Now, can you just give me two seats to finish this? You've got, it's got to be live. Yeah, but you can't do it while I'm doing this, so I've done the copyright. But can you give me two sets? You've got one and a half sets. Six? Six. 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 Okay. Right, so let's think about these. Now, I need to reacquaint myself. No idea where I was up to. Uh, the calipers look bloody awful. You can see that's one part. One was covered in oil. And of course the two halves are munted. So we need to clean these up. I was going to get them hydroblasted, but I might try and clean them up myself. They're very, very simple. I've ordered the kits for them. I'm just about to order the pistons. Um, I just want to make sure, I think they're 66 mil or something like that. But I think when I pulled these apart, they were knackered. So, can we see down here? Yes, I think we can. I want to reacquaint myself. Perhaps this will give me a good idea. What the, yeah, they're stuffed. Look at that. But the reason I kept them is that I know precisely, I think that one was alright. Yeah, that one's okay. So that I know precisely what size to get. What's the date on this? Here we go, Tuesday the 8th of March 2016. That'll be right. Right, now, piss that off. And that, uh, and we can take a measurement with the slack verniers. And we call them slack because we should be using a manual vernier, not an electronic one. 60 mil. 60? There we go. That's what I want to know. Right. So, as far as hardware for the front is concerned, it's a pretty easy gig. We have the two top bolts, which we have wires through, hence the holes. We'll clean those threads out of it. The two bottom ones which again have wires going through them. Actually you have a wire going through there, there, and then around. Four springs, 
and two nipples, and we have to make sure that they're nice and clear before we go trying to bleed the brakes. I think they are. I think I checked them before I bagged them, so that's cool. Right, there's a couple of slides here, and the rest of this stuff's all rear, and we'll do the rear ones later. What are we doing now? And yeah, so once all this stuff gets here, we're going to be in a good position to start rebuilding. In the meantime, while I'm waiting, I'll start cleaning stuff up. This weather sucks. We've been lucky. We've had um, a really good autumn. Sorry, a really good spring, good summer, and a good autumn up till now. It is so 10 degrees Celsius in here, which is probably like an English summer's day. I don't know. But next to the weather we've been having, it's really cold, and you can hear the rain. Um, so what we've got here is rear caliper. I've stuck like when I pulled this apart, which was. A year or two ago, a year or so ago, I can't remember what it was. I put small cable ties so I know that these parts are from one side. The other one, as you see before, um, I haven't disassembled yet. These are in average condition. Now, what I was going to do with all these calipers, the fronts included, was to take them to be hydroblasted, but I've decided against it now because I've spent a lot of money on the car. And the door seals alone, I've had a look, it's going to be about 700 bucks because they're two piece. And it, they haven't got the same profile all the way around. They've got like little squash sections and clips and all sorts of stuff that goes through them. So the rubbers for this car are huge. A full rubber kit, I think 1600. But I'm just getting the ones I want. Um, so what I did with the front ones, they look terrible, is I took them to work and I put them in this sort of heated dishwasher type thing, industrial dishwasher. And they'll come back and they'll be a little bit cleaner and then I'll sort of soak them in a tub of vinegar for a week or so just to get rid of any rust, clean them up and deal with it that way because I just want to keep the, the cost down. The hydro blasting is, is expensive when you start taking, it's nine, what, 12 parts all up, if you know what I mean. Um, these are the slides. They're a bit uh, sort of chewed at the end where the, um, the circle goes through there. That's where I grabbed them with vices to sort of wiggle them out. Here comes the thunder. But the slide condition itself is very, very good. So I'm gonna reuse them. Um, but these look like they're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna save a bit of money. I'm gonna do these uh, and get them ready to sort of put them on. These ones might not clean up quite as well because there's paint on them. Um, that's not the original cast iron color. They're a cast iron caliper and you can see they've been painted. So I don't, I painted the XW ones. I can do the same with this, I suppose. It's not a big deal. And I'll just use some um, a, a sort of a suitable heat resistant paint. But all I need to do, I've ordered everything except the rear pistons. Um, and I'll have to order those as well because I think I don't want to use that. I really don't want to use that at all. So I'm not going to. So once I've got those, it's just a matter of um, basically putting it all together. And then I've got all the calipers done. I can put them on the car. And uh, the rest of the stuff is on its way. See, I'll stick that in the vinegar as well. That's all sort of crappy looking, so, yeah. Okay, so I've taken the stuff to work, put in the uh, parts wash and it's made virtually no difference. Some of it's a bit cleaner, like in here, that sort of thing for the rear, but it's still horrible on the outside. A lot of that's old paint. These bits, I turn them around. It's just not cutting it. And the other thing is, there's still rust deposits in there. That looks marginally cleaner. Um, so yeah, not not great. Right, so I've got my mock little cleaning bay with a bit of cardboard here to stop my nice wall getting all splattered. Got to clean that. Why brush these? And there, okay, it's all good. The fourth one, as you know, is down there behind the washing machine sort of in around the calipers. The idea with this one is I'll put the rear one together um, and then take the other one apart. Actually, I've missed a bit in there. Inside the front calipers and round them. Just a quick lick and a promise. I'm gonna try something now. Uh, hopefully it's not in the same vein as the uh, hydrogen peroxide on the bottle, which was something that didn't work as well as I hoped last year. Let's get some brake calipers in here. That'll bleed off. I'm going to put this upside down so I want the solution to... I don't want it bubbling there, but that's open, so that's cool. 
Vinegar. Might have to dilute this. Have to see how far a couple of bottles of this stuff goes. I knew I should have bought a third one. No, oh, cover it up. Come on. Oh, just a little bit, not quite enough. Doesn't matter. Stick a bit of water in it. Stick a bit of this in. And we're good. Right. So. The thinking here is that that is going to clean all the stuff up. That's the hope. So I'm just going to leave that. I'll have to clean that up. Other stuff that was dumped in. It. Should be right. So we've got to sort of take it out and stop it from remaining active. If you know what I mean, rusting. We apparently use bicarb. Works on the same sort of uh, premise as when you develop a black and white photo. You have your developer solution and your stop bath and your fixer. And this is like the stop bath, if you like, to stop the process. And then we can wash it all off and all that sort of stuff. So there wasn't enough room for this one. It's really those rusty bits inside the caliper that I'm interested in getting rid of. That's the only bit that wouldn't fit. So it appears, all things considered, to be reasonably effective. God, doing this sucks. Um... What am I doing? I'm trying to hold the camera to do this at the same time. Here's two codes. Had little stripey bits on it before. Just got to make sure we get them back. Um, had a comment from a guy about the way that's channeled and the water can't get away. I know about that. Um, the ones that hadn't been painted on the bottom all rotted out. They're sort of, uh, there's some over here somewhere. If you look through there. The bottom's rot. And then it acts as a big blotting paper and just sucks the moisture up into it and sort of just all falls apart. Now, the way around that, I know, is to... That's crooked down there, but we don't care. The way around that is to... Um, hang on, I'll just finish this bit. God, I hate doing this. Is to just have the pickets coming off a ledge and secured from the back. Now, I know about that, but I don't want that look. Um, I want the look I've got. I want them capped at the bottom, because that's what they're... That's sort of added to the house, if you know what I mean. So, um, I'm just waiting on the bloody vinegar with the calipers. So I figured I might as well finish these. And I've got the other bits of capping painted over there. To, and I've got the pickets cut up there. So then it's just a matter of making up the new railings for up there and up there. So, have to do more of this crap. Um, also got a, I'm going over it, I, mean, I don't know how good these lines are going to be. I did this, I replaced some pickets 10 years ago. The rest of them, or well, most of them were there from when we moved in. We've been here 15 years. And, um, yeah, all the ones that were replaced that, um, that I did haven't rotted. They've stayed good, um, because I painted the bottom of them to sort of seal them off. This is step two coats. But the ones that weren't did, if you know what I mean. Right, well it's 4.30 on Tuesday. I put this stuff in Saturday morning, 11.30. Um, so I'm gonna pull it out and have a look. Probably should have mentioned that this is the cheapy vinegar. It was $2.50 and it's watered down, basically. It's not pure stuff. It's also worth mentioning that I have fiddled around with this and taken it out and had a look at it and it looks pretty good. We can use a bit of Scotch-Brite and there is still some rust evident there but Scotch-Brite seems to remove it. What about this bit here? Let's look at this. So, I mean, that could probably come out um, this did have paint on it, which has come off, but you can see there's still rusty residue there, but it really isn't too far off being cleaned. Um, brackets like this. We're not there yet. It's cleaning up really, really well. 
There's an O-ring in there which has got to come out. I might dig that out now. Mm. Stinks though. God, that's truth. But these are the parts I'm worried about inside here. That does look like it's doing a pretty good job though. Right, so we've got the wiper arms here. That's an old set. I picked the best of two. The linkages look the same. These were probably even a little bit dirtier, but the sort of end pieces uh, of this original set look better. So I uh, sort of picked these ones. I took photos before of how to map them out. These can be confusing. If you do get them the wrong way, when you go to turn the wipers on, they, uh, uh, they don't work properly. If these are all bent in a certain way. Um, I mentioned before, these are ripped. They come with these little caps. I sort of fitted one here, like that. They fit over there, which means you can't fit the wiper blades to the car, so I've no idea what they're for. Um, someone might be able to enlighten me on that, but we can see the way they fit. You've got a, a little plastic receptacle, so to speak, and a retaining ring. Um, and they sort of snap over. They're quite difficult to get on in some ways. Um, I found the easiest way with that other one, I've only done one, just get a block of wood, put it over and snap it on with a bit of wood, and that locks it on. You can, yep, you can push it. Oh, it's just come off. Hang on a sec, we'll go for, we'll go for round two, eh? They sort of sit right on the cusp and then you have to um, press them down a bit further. And then they snap in. Yeah, like that. That's it. So that's cool. So it's that one done. And of course, we can just do the same with that. So this one would be... And you've got to make sure you get these right. You know, you can really do them a disservice if you do them the wrong way. That's going to go like that. I just, I'd like someone to tell me what those, what these caps do. I cannot see the point of Ouch, that didn't feel good on my head. There we go. That's cool. Then we'll just do the last one. And then it's just a matter of cleaning these up. I'll clean them up as best I could at work on a Y wheel and just give them a satin black paint job and then put it in. But that way, when you look down the scuttle, it all looks good. It looks nice and clean. Now, Jason, whose channel I plugged, he cleaned every single bolt. Um, by hand before he had them plated. And another electro plater made me get them hydroblasted and they came back looking terrible. It depends on the plate you use. I think Jason uses Met uh, Warner's Metro, who is the company I use. Having said that, the filler tube didn't come out very well at all. Um, now, the reason for that was there was corrosion on it, but not just that. It had been Y-wheeled, similar to what I did on the other one. Um, and the other thing is, there's still scaly rubbish down there. So I'm going to... Um, Clean that out as best I can with the Y wheel and run phosphoric acid in there, rag it off, and then it'll seal it adequately. But that is quite a rare, uh, quite a rare one. It's like a GT one in that it's large around here for that clip on fuel cap. These are different fuel caps from what the rest of the Fords do. Um, it's bigger than the other one that I sort of talked about before. Um, so, therefore, the gasket's small. It is too small, the one that Rare Spare sold me. Um, I'm not sure, I think XPGTs use a breather there. Uh, if they don't, this is unique to the XC, Fairmont GXL. So that didn't come out as well as I'd have liked. It looked like a silver rattle can job, but at the end of the day, they virtually didn't charge me for doing this. So I'll just clean up that scaly nonsense in there. There's still a bit of it there. A bit of phosphoric acid, rag it out, and it should be good to go. So I'll continue with this and uh, finish off what we need to do with it. Right, so I've got these linkages here, sort of muck around with these, got them nice and free, giving them a really, really average rattle can paint job, but they're really free, they're lovely, so that's cool. So I'm going to look at these now, we've got these plugs in as we explained the other day, this is a freaking bird, they always start when I start filming, I hate the things. Right, yeah, so we go like that, we know that is 
this arm, which therefore goes into this one. So I'm just going to pop a bit of grease on this ball. We're not going overkill here, just a bit. And that should plug on. Should be not pretty good. That was a fail. That was a fail. But the easiest way to put these on is just to squeeze them in a vice. I just had a rag in there or a pair of soft drawers. Doesn't really matter. I'm just putting a bit of grease over and put in the vice jaws, push it together. If you try and hit it on the bench, it's just, you know, these collars come out and they go skew with and all that sort of stuff. So it's just easy doing the vice. Right, so there are the reconditioned wiper parts. I'll just straighten this up so those watching this who have OCD can see exactly what I mean. <laughs> oh no, I've been nasty. All right, so that's it. That's cool. Now, I've had to go and buy bolts, which is a huge pain in the neck because, don't forget, this car was built entirely from spare parts. We have these top ones here for the spline, which is 841.25, it's a metric thread. And we have these guys here that are held in with 316th ones. These are Allen head one. I had one wiper one left, which is the wrong one. That's for the wiper motor. Let's get these ones here. Now, they're not very XC. But they're going to be fine because they're concealed by the scuttle, you see. So these little guys should go in there, which they do. So we'll mount this stuff in the car now, I think. All right, this is going to be easy, I don't think. So I'm just going to sort of mock set them up. Taking that cover off. I think I will, just a minute. Right. I don't know if the XW one's been like this. It was a lot easier. Probably because I'm approaching it from the wrong angle, but the XW, I will say in some ways, is a much easier car to restore. More birds, they're on the roof, can you hear them? Battery out. Wait a second. Let's do this. It's got a creak in it. Might be worth. Um, I don't want to creak in there. That's going to annoy me. I'll see. Hang on a minute. Oh, I see. Hang on. It's up in here. Just let me turn this off for a moment. Got a knock in it. Oh, damn it. That ring. That is so cool. That's what the friggin' knock is. 
What a pest. Are these ones all intact? See that? Aftermarket parts, mate. Is it going to focus? It's refitted that. I haven't got much faith in it because it's pretty weak. Hang on a second, let's get some wipers going. Faith in it though, those cheap repro parts are never as good as the original. Right then, throw that back on. That was off Jason's XB, the wiper inspection cover. Um, not rusted through, but did have a lot of surface rust, so just pour 15 in. I knew it wasn't going to be a, um, something that was going to be seen, but um, I still wanted to protect it, you know what I mean? Now, somebody's asked me what mastic seal we're using. It's this stuff Sally's Domestic, industrial grade, black, 400 grams. From hardware shops, shops, I should say, and I think it was about eight dollars or so. So I am just going to now mastic this up. Let's take that excess stuff off a little lid of it, or the top of it, and then we should be able to seal this up and put it back on the vehicle, screw it down, and then we don't have to lift it again. Unless those ridiculously stupid plastic clips that I paid a fortune for give way. Which is perfectly likely, really. Okay, there we go. See if nail in. This stuff lasts. You put a nail in something like liquid nails, or elastic, and six months later it's all hard back to here. This stuff lasts literally years. The last cartridge of this I had, I would have had for at least 10 years. I bought that when I was doing the XW, and you can see it's nearly done. It's sort of up to here. Sort of fuel tanks and all that sort of stuff with that around the flange of them. But yeah, that lasts forever. It's great stuff. Right, we'll talk your screen. We'll cap this off with a couple of nice new nuts. And that is how a scuttle should look. You should be able to see in here and see it all looks good. Your stupid dick brain host got the sealer wrong. <laughs> Let me get that thing and show you. Let's see, whenever, well, I'll show you quickly. See the sealing job? Just there, isn't that nice? I got it really wrong, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, look, when I look at a car to purchase, I always look in here to make sure it all looks fresh. I mean, everyone looks along doors and underneath them and in the rear quarters and all this sort of stuff for rust. But looking in the scuttle tells you a lot about the restoration work uh, and under the dash as well. Have a look under the dash, but that's how it should look rather good. So this is the bucket I was doing the brake parts in, and for some unknown reason it was leaking. Very, very slightly. So this is the moulding imperfection or something. I ended up taking everything out of here, rinsing it out, and putting all the brake parts in another bucket. I bought a couple of $1 buckets. I wanted one for a rinse as well. Oh, I don't think that matters. I'll use that as a rubbish bin in here. Anyway, the other thing I want to do is you've got to go through a series of rinsing off and washing brake parts. My pressure washer thing here is broken. And I used a regular garden one, it leaks and pops off and does all that sort of stuff. I can't get that off now. So, Gurney, it's, this is just through at the hardware shop. Um, they don't list a, a part, I can't find the part for it. It's got a little strainer in there and all this sort of stuff. I've just bought some brass fittings to put those on. Hopefully we get some joy out of it. And we can start doing the brake stuff now. Um, look what happens when you leave parts out that they rust so easily. This has happened over the past week. So, I love brass stuff. I just hope this doesn't leak. It shouldn't. We should be good. And then we can get on with the job at hand. Right, okay, we'll try that and pray that it works. Right, so it's time to revisit this. We've got our brake parts we put in a week ago on Saturday. 
last set I should say. And I'm just going to get, how do you open this stuff? You're supposed to use, someone said, I think it's a cup per gallon of water. That's about a gallon. I'm just going to stick all that in there. That can be a little neutralizing bar. So fill it with water. Yeah, that's probably a bit too much, but I think we'll be alright for now. Right, so I just moved it and um, loads of bubbles came up. So as we take this out, all that rush should come off. I don't think all that's going to come off, to be honest. I think most of it probably. But I thought um, it might be worth hitting it with a, um, what do you call it? Pressure spray, pressure, pressure washer. If we get it with some scotch right, it just starts to look fairly clean. So it's clean on that side. But I'm going to take it outside, just hit it with a pressure washer and just see what happens. I'm not expecting huge things here. As long as the internals are clean enough for the piston to push all the way back, because there was a lot of um, scaly stuff stopping the piston going back. And Actually, it's doing pretty well. Except I've just got a face full of it. Well, it doesn't look too bad at all, does it? need to get in here a bit more. That's hard to do because of the angle the thing's on. Oh that works a treat. Yeah, you can't complain with that, can we? Anyway, by doing this, what we're doing is we're taking grit out of the um, asphalt and sort of impregnating it into here. So we'll have to give it a good wash. But I'll throw this in the bicarb now to neutralise it and I'll get the next bit. It's going to go out of the camera. Do the back so you can see that a bit easier. Too bad. Right, so, whoops, I keep clicking the camera. If we pull some of this stuff out, it's in the bicarb at the moment. I'm just going to use a, a Y wheel just to get rid of all that stuff. Hang on, I might just change that and put this one on. And from here, I'm going to, I didn't do that very well, hang on. That just comes straight off. Right, well, I think I'm going to clean all this up and wash this stuff out in hot water. And um, we'll be back. Now, I've just, um, just boiled the kettle and put these into cleaner, and they're beautiful. The problem is, though, when you when you do that and you take them out, they rust before your eyes. So I'm just going around with a bit of fine scotch brite, just to give them a bit of a, a, a spruce up. And the difference is phenomenal in what it was like. Now, I think it's a pity to cover this. 
I'm going to put a clear rattle can enamel on it to preserve that look because I like it. Now I can't do it with the other, with the back one. I've got to paint that silver, which I hate doing. I mean, when you've got kit that looks like this and it's original, I think you keep the original finish on it. Um, I just think it's better. Now this being cast iron and today being cool, it doesn't matter because I can just rattle can it and uh, it'll dry off nice and quickly. But that's beautiful and they're so clean inside. Now hydro blasting will do better because obviously you get all that paint off that was on the other thing. But uh, for me this is perfect. I'm very happy with that. So here are the, the main um, front caliper parts if you like that have been cleaned up. Pistons going beautifully easily. We're not going to use those, we're going to use new ones. And you can see they've turned out quite well. You'll also see that one side, or some of them have cable ties on them. That's just to denote that uh, they're from the same side, just to eliminate confusion. So I think now is probably time to rebuild one. First thing, bit of brake clean. Oops, I'll do it on here, over the floor. I need to blow that out with compressed air. Just a moment, please. I'm waiting for that to come up. Let's grab a piston. Well, these ones, that's a good one. Nothing wrong with that. This one's not. This has had it. Uh, water it had obviously got into the brake fluid. Um, it might not even be off the same car. I don't know, but that's no good. But this one is. So I want to um, just check dimensions and all that sort of stuff. use compressed air to clean this up. It's got an anti-rust sort of solution on it. We're just squirting that off with brake clean. Just a sec. Right. This has something on it which is funny. I think we'll get that off with thinner and a rag and then redo it, re-clean it. Now, I'm going to have some tea. If you watch Eric the Car Guy, he will tell you never to use anything but brake fluid as a lubricant to putting pistons in. And I don't agree. Now, it depends where your training is, what your training is, and all that sort of stuff. Mine is this stuff. It's PBR, which is the maker of these things. And it's a castor oil based rubber grease, and it's designed for caliper assembly. There's only three components relevant to the caliper in here, and everyone watching this probably already knows, and that's just the dust seal, the square cut seal, and the little nipple cover. So I'm just going to pop a bit of grease around the, I might pop a bit around the bore actually, just in case it's a, a little while before I bleed the brakes. I don't want any chance of rust forming in there, which I don't think it will, and we've only used a very, very small amount. I'm going to put some around the square cut seal. My gloves are clean. Eric the car guy says just use brake fluid as I said before. But the way I've been taught is you can use that but you need to ensure that you can put the piston in by hand. And he, in his video, uses Stilson's to push them right back. Now you can do that when you're doing a pad change. You can get big multi-grips or a G-clamp, whatever you want. But when you're putting it in for the first time, you want to make absolutely sure that this isn't getting damaged and you can't feel that when you're using multis. I'm just going to change my gloves. Now, that's how I see it. I just don't agree with what he said. There's another guy that... Um, Gets the dust seal, puts the dust seal in first, like that, and then he puts the piston over it and uses compressed air to push that up and over, which we're not going to do either. I'm just going to pop some gloves on, and we won't. And look, I've been doing it this way for 35 years, and never had an issue. Just never had an issue with it. It's just the way I've always done it. Just going to wrap a little bit around here. 
And this guy here needs to go over the piston, like that. And we're going to try to, but I'm only using a tiny bit of grease, just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to pull that down. And I'm going to pull it down over the piston crown, for want of a better word. Like that. And that way, I can feed that in and just push the piston back. But I need my other glasses. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I've had this tube for years, this stuff lasts for ages. I have to sit down so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just knocking the camera again. I'm just going to put that in and run that seal around there, little dust seal. And it'll pop in. Like that. You can generally see it. Get my little special torch. I have to buy another one of these because my daughter went to camp and lost mine. Little bugger. Oh, okay. There we go. That's going to go in beautifully. And we just push him home. I've got to try and do it so you can see it. I can feel it going already. There's a bit of a stiff one. back like that in time for more tea. Perfect. And that's how you should do it. Now as I said before, if that's half out, if you just change your pads, of course you can get a clamp or a big pair of these guys to push it back. That's fine. But on first install, don't ever push that back like that. It has to go in by hand. So you know it's all good. And that is all good. Excellent. So, the next bit. We have, hang on, let me just get my bearings right here. The bleeder at the top. That goes at the top. So that little bloke is going to go in like that. Holy freaking thing. <laughs> I think it does. And for that we need the slides. So, hmm, more rubber grease. I didn't replace these. Those little things. We should really do the slides with um, normal grease. And we've got this one here, which goes in, there's a little hole there. I'm just wondering, maybe, maybe it's best if I put a bit of regular grease on that slide part there. I'm just going to put a tiny bit in there like that. Just where the caliper slide actually runs. These are a stupid design anyway, I think. So I reckon that's the top there, that's where that big bolt goes. I reckon that goes like that. Hey, better. Um, hmm. Try this one. I better double check in the manual because I haven't looked. I'm just going completely on memory. That one has to go in a little bit further. We've got some little things that. Okay. Some split pins. We need to put split pins in. There's your slide there, though. Let's have a split pin. I don't know if these nice big ones are going to fit. Oh dear. But that will stop it from coming out. Where my side pads? Oh my gosh, I'm making a mess. Making a mess. What do you do? I just hope they're broad enough. Where did that bit go? I don't know. 
There, I reckon. What do you think? Cool. Very nice. Okay. Now, next thing on the agenda. Put that back on again. I always put the lids back on. Is the springs on these guys? Where they go over there and into there, and these are pricks to put in. This one's, this one's shinier. I want shiny. <laughs> oh, come on, get in there, you son of a gun. <clears throat> oh, this is hard. I can't get it in. Uh, nope. Not quite. That's right above it. I just need someone to help me knock it in. Right, that looks reasonably spiffy. Don't know the point of that. Anti rattle, maybe? Anyway, whatever. Next thing is to put the breast in the nipple. And a little rubber thing. Then we've got these little guys here, which should have watches with them somewhere. And I, oh, hang on, and there's also a banjo bolt. And the banjo is for the hose fitting that goes up the bum. <sighs> Isn't this exciting? Then we've got the these bits here. They hold them to the car. But I need the washers. I need the washers. What did I do with the goddamn washers? Come on, you. You can idiot, what did you do with them? There's the big ones. Oh, there's the big ones. I don't know why I put them in a separate bag. Probably took me a while to find them. Right. And there's one that goes with that as well. I don't even know where that is. I actually don't know if these had a washer on them. They've put Loctite and they're also wired. So maybe they don't use a washer, but that is the other one that holds it to the car. And there's our caliper, nicely finished off. And I think that's the wrong one. That can't be right. Oh, damn, I've got the slide around the wrong way. Because I'm stupid. So I need to turn that around. That is the top. And the nipple should be there. Very clever. So there you go, two overhauled front calipers for $1.80. Well, not really a dollar eighty. A dollar eighty is what you pay for two liters of undiluted white vinegar at a normal supermarket. I paid a bit more because I went to a um, twenty-four hour one, and it was watered down, so it wasn't as good. But it didn't didn't matter because I had it in for a week and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. And uh, all I basically did with it after that was power washed and put some, some clear on just to protect it. I prefer that look over and above the rattle can one. This is the rear caliper bracket which is rattle canned and you know what I'm going to soak it in thinner I don't like it it just looks fake um I'll move it up so you can see it a bit more there you go so I think I'll do that and I'll do the same uh, natural finish on the rears as well because they're cast iron uh, but whatever the case look I hope you've enjoyed this got something out of it take care of yourselves and uh, I'll see you around bye bye